everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today are you ready for the final part of our Chalk and Notch Marcel dress Sew Along for Beginners. Hopefully you feel that we've hit the right, well, we, I have hit the right level for you and that you've picked up lots of tricks and tips that you can use with your sewing. If you're used to my Sew Along tutorials anyway, then you there'll be a, there will have been lots of bits in there that you already know and that you know that I use regularly, but you know, if you're new to my sew alongs, then it, hopefully it was a good introduction to dressmaking and how to make this dress. Now, I think there might just be one final bonus um, video after I finish this one, which hopefully if I can encourage my mum to give us a bit of a twirl in her dress, and then I'll talk about actually how I'm gonna adjust the dress to fit her. But because I'm not seeing her until later in the month when I fly back to the UK for a short visit, then today we are going to finish up our dress. We're gonna sew the, um, the skirt panel that we've been doing here onto the bodice panel here. And then we're going to neaten it on the inside as well. And I'm gonna show you how to adjust the straps as well at the back so you can get the fit to cover your bra strap should you wish to, or just get so that it's comfortable for you to wear it. So without further ado, let me get started. Okay, so we have now, we've got our top bodice, or our, our top bodice, our bodice and with our straps on it. Um, we're just keeping, keeping that to one side just for the moment. Next thing that we're going to do is we are going to now take our completed skirt and we're gonna have, this is the top of the skirt here, of the dress here, and then this is all the tiers going down here. And I want you to locate the two panels, the front and the back panel because from the seam allowance to the seam allowance on each, the front and the back panel only, not the side gathered tiered sections, not those, we're just gonna put two rows of gathering stitches across here. So I have now already changed my thread over to my yellow thread on my sewing machine. I'm going to increase my stitch length up to number four again, which is the gathering stitch that we need, and I'm going to let my tension down to number two. So that will set us our machine up now for gathering stitches. And all I'm going to do is start, so identify where your tear is, and you can tell that because of the gathers in the side panels. And literally, well, we need to just move my needle across, don't we? So the first one was position number seven, wasn't it? So let's move that one across to give us that first thin line from the top. So let's just start, I'm just starting right at the edge. No reversing, and I have got some threads left on the end of my um, cotton so that I can pull those in order to gather it together. And by now, you'll be an absolute ace at gathering, so this will all feel like second nature to you now. Just make sure that your seam allowances are being pressed towards your tiered panels, so towards the side panels. So that's one. Lever row and um, some threads and then I'm going to go just skip the side pa tiered panel and now go on to the front and do the first row on that side as well while my machine's in the same needle position just roll your fabric I'm just going through the single layer at the top of the dress Make sure you see my allowance again is going towards your side panel. Then I can leave some threads and break our threads. And now I'm going to move my posi needle position to the 4.5 section, which is my next row. And then I'm going to run my threads along here. Using the first line of stitching as my guide. That's one. And now I'm just going to repeat that second row of stitching. Just keep folding your skirt, just keep all the bulk across to the left hand side. Hopefully getting a bit more used to dealing with all of this fabric now. But we are on the homeward stretch, so you've not got too long to go now. that just just tighten your tension up just to make sure that you've got your tension back to where you need it because that's really easy one to forget okay so now what I want you to do is fold the two panels that you've just 
sewn with those gathering stitches just in half so you're laying your tiered panels on top of each other because this is going to help us get our orientation for the next section so if you can see i've got a low section here for the back so that's my center back across here over the side panel where it scoops up and you can hopefully see that curve and then across the front so what i want you to do now is at the center front there'll be a notch and i want you just to put a pin in that center front notch panel and then just go back to the center back and there'll be a panel there'll be a notch on the center back around about where you folded it in half and just put a pin in there just to hold that together for now i've not gathered anything up as yet the other thing that i want you to note is that there are two um, notches in this one so there's an, one notch each in the center of each of the two side panels as well so let's just put a pin in those as well because that will help us just identify where those are once we start to sew the next section so there's my notches there so i've got four pins in just sticking up towards the top one at center front one in each of the panel side panels and one at center back because then i want you to take your bodice and I want you to fold that in half so that your two straps are on top of each other. And I want you to put a pin where the notch is for centre front. And then I want you to put a pin where the notch is for centre back. Okay. Then I want you to turn the bodice inside out so that you've got the right side is on the inside and your lining is facing out. And then I want you to have, find your strap position See where the straps are falling down and where we've got the curve for the neckline and that's my centre front point. So now with right sides together and your body's facing down towards you, I want you to put, and it comes better if you come sort of come inside from the bottom of your bodice, that's it. And then replace those two notches you've got, so two pins you've got there at the moment with one because you're going to match the notch at the centre front and put a pin in. Okay, so there's my... This is my centre front that we just had the pin in and there's the centre front of my bodice and we've just pinned that onto there. The next thing that I want you to do is work along your bodice and there's another little notch. Okay, so I'm working towards my right and that little notch is where the panel, the side panel seam is. So where your tiered panel starts, so match that notch. It's just underneath where the straps are and then put a pin in there. And I'm actually gonna pin from the inside of my dress rather than from the inside of the bodice because I think we'll be stitching that from the on top of the gathers, so we need that to be in place. Okay, so that's those two points now put together. Now we're going to follow across until we've reached the side seam. And then the side seam is going to go to match with the notch that's under the arc, um, in the center of the tiered panel. So just put your pin there and just adjust that. So that's there, there's our side seam. And there's my panel there for, with my tear on it. And it's in the center of that. Then we're gonna carry along around the bodice to our next notch, which is at the center back. We should have another notch on the side here first, or we have just there. There's another notch first on the side and that's going to match up with the, with the next side panel. So I've got that one there and then we're going to match up now to we've got our pin in our centre back so we're going to match that up with the pin we put in the centre of our bodice at the centre back and match those two notches and turn that together so it is it is the fabric on your actual fashion fabric that I'm matching your lining's just out of the way at the moment just fold that down out of the way just to clarify then we're going to move along to the next notch on our back and that's going to be the end of the back panel. And just make sure you see my allowances pointing in towards your tiered panels. So a pin in there. And then we're round, so keep just twisting your dress round. And then we've got a side seam with a notch so we can match that up and put, it, put the pin through that place. So you've got your side seam there, seam allowance and that's matching with the notch on the centre of that panel. And then there's another notch where the end of the side panel goes as well, and then that can match up too. And then we're back to centre front again. So we've gone all the way around and your skirt fabric is sitting in the middle. So, so the, um, 
your bodice is like a cap that's going around the top of your skirt. So your body, this is your bodice on the outside and that's sort of your skirt on the inside and your skirt edge. So now you're going to find where your, I'm working on the centre back first, but it doesn't really matter. Just go to the end of where your, your lines of gathering stitches are. Separate the threads like we did before when we we're doing the tiers. And now just pull on those threads and you're going to gather this back section up until it's the same length as the bodice. So make sure that that's roughly the same length. Just pull it so that it's straight. And then we can do that figure of eight around the pin just to hold on to our threads for us, like we did with our rest of it. And now we can even those gathers out just nice and evenly, just along those rows of stitching. And then once you're happy with how they are distributed, then you can then put a pin through to hold that up. And I'm putting my pins with the heads up over the top of my bodice like that so they're easy to see because otherwise they can get lost sometimes and your gathers pins can. So another one further down just to hold that still. So then let's go to the other side of this centre back panel and, and isolate those two threads as well. Doing the gathering on the back. There's one, there's two. And then we're just going to pull those in until that section of the back as well from the centre back out to that side seam is well it's not quite the side seam is it but it's the back of the centre back panel is the same length and then again we're going to do that figure of eight just around the pin just to hold on to those threads for us okay and now we've got that anchored down we can just distribute those pins using our, either our fingernail or our finger and just spread those out Okay, and then raw edges together. Put a pin in, I'm gonna put a couple of pins in along there. So then we've got our back panel gathered here between the two notches, well there's three notches, there's a notch on either side of the centre back and that's where that's all gathered now and that's how it looks from the inside. Now turn your dress around so you've got your centre front panel facing you or whichever way around you've done it. And let's allocate, let's find those threads on the end of the gathering stitches for our front panel. And again, we're going to do the same. So let's just pull on those threads and gather that front panel up until it is the same length as our bodice front between the notches, between those pinned points. Make sure you get that all right. And then when you're ready, let's just do the figure of eight around the pin. Just hold that together and now we can now centre our gathers to make sure that they're as straight as possible and that gathering is distributed across the front for those stitches those just even those gathers out so that they're all right and you're happy with those and then we're going to put a pin in when the raw edges are together just make sure your lining stays out of the way you don't want to catch your lining in your pins so that's got to stay proud and got to we'll neaten that off afterwards. Just make sure none of your gathers are twisting. And then we're going to move to the other side of that panel and find the gathering stitches for that panel too, for that side of the panel, and then pull on those. So we're just gathering these cent the centre front and centre back panel up to match the length of the bodice between those points. And that's why those notches are so important on the bodice. And if you miss those, just go back on your pattern and just have a look and see if you make sure you've got them and that you're happy with where they are in terms of in the right place. Because that will help make sure that your all the fabric is distributed all, all the way around the right way. Okay, and once you've done that... We can then put a couple of pins in just to hold that in place as well. Make sure your raw edges are together. Okay, so now you should have all the way around, just put a couple of extra pins in if you need to anywhere where you feel there's a bit of a gap and it might, might just not be... Um, 
might not stay aligned properly for you with your raw edges together. So I'm just going onto the side panels mainly and just matching those raw edges up together to make sure they're all going to stay straight for me. So that one, that's that one, and then just one more just here. Okay, so there we go, that's all pinned in there. So the next thing then is to go to your machine and then just to alter your thread back to your white because we're going to be stitching, I'm going to be stitching with my white thread. So whatever your main construction colour has been, that's the colour thread that you need in your machine. And we're just going to be on a straight stitch on a stitch length of 2.2 and our tension, remember to reset your tension if you've not reset it back after doing your gathering stitches because we want these stitches to be nice and strong. So I'll just change my thread over and I'll be back. Okay, so now I've got my thread in. I'm going to start somewhere nice and easy. Let's start at an underarm seam, I think, would be a nice, straightforward place to start. So let's find the underarm seam on the bodice. And I'm going to sew this with the actual bodice down against my, my um, machine bed on here. But what you need to make sure is just that that lining stays out of the way because you don't want to catch that in your stitches. So let me just start on this panel just here. And literally... Just adjust everything so that it's all sitting nicely. And we're sewing with a one centimetre seam allowance. So you that you're in the, I'm in the middle of a flat panel here, which is great because I'm not on any um, gathering at the moment. So we're going to take a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back. And then once we've done that, we're going to put the needle in the work. And then we are going to then, we can take out the pin that was just at the back there. Oh, where's my pin cushion gone? Here it is. And now we're just going to move forward and then we're going to go on to the next section. So I'm coming up to where there's gathering stitches so what I'm going to do when I get close I'm going to just take that pin out and then I'm just going to with my needle in the work just lift the bicep foot up so I can just get access to those threads for my gathers and now I can hold on to those threads while we just move forward over that section there. And again, you, you're hoping to sew in the middle of your gathering stitches. I've got all of the, the fabric for the skirt over to one side. And I'm just going to keep twisting that round towards me as I go around this circle so that it doesn't get in too tight a twist. And just keep your fabric lying nice and flat. Raw edges together. As you're going over your gathering stitches, take out your pins. Going to keep manipulating your fabric round as you go so that you've always got a nice flat section always keep remembering your swoosh and just swooshing your fabric underneath there so that you've got everything out of the way and keep an eye out for your pins because with having gathers they do tend to hide your pins do tend to hide in the gathers and also just make sure that all of your, your fabric is down so you, your gathers are going horizontally across your bed. You don't want your gathers to be like this all bunched up underneath. Keep all of that nice and flat and straight as you're going round. So I'm coming up to another pin here at the end of that section. So let me take that pin out and undo that figure of eight on those threads before I sew over it. Just make sure everything's lying nice and flat. Just together. Just make sure you're not going to get any puckers in any of your places. Coming up to another pin, so I've just taken that one out and just keep rolling everything round. You're going to start and think, when am I ever going to get to the end? But you will do. We 
know when we get to the end because we've got to go around to here, look, because that's where we started. And there's no pins in any of that section and it's only the pin section left. So just, again, make sure you've got no lining getting caught up and that all your fabric's all sitting nicely. Get your pins out as you go. Spread any gathers out that you need to just to make sure they're nice and even. gathering thread so get ready to release that pins out and release the threads just easier to get out if you undo them so. onto the side panel and then just reverse to stop okay. cool. needle out of our work and let's trim our threads Okay, so we've got all the way round, we've got no pins left, so we know we've got all of those out. And now, if we just go from the front and just hold on to our straps, our bodice is now attached onto our dress. So give yourself a round of applause, you really are getting towards the end of a finished dress. So just have a quick check now, just go around your um, bodice band and just make sure you've got no puckers in your stitches at all or anywhere where you might want to just readjust it that's all fine I think and then what we can do then is we're just going to pull on our gathering threads and pull those out of our garment so that that's all released you might have to go onto the other side to find your other threads and just pull those through as well Okay, so the bodice is on and we've got, we've got a complete dress. Um, the thing that we need to do now is talk about the straps. Okay, so what you need to do now is, if we go have a look back inside the dress, we're going to locate where the notches were for the straps, just to give us a bit of a guide. But then I want you to sew inside your lining on the seam allowance on the inside on the top edge where the body where the fashion fabric meets the um, lining fabric you'll find a notch. Just mark that area on the outside, take your strap and then just pin it on the outside for now either with a safety pin or with a pin depending on your preference for trying this on. Let's go on to the other one, make sure you've not got your straps twisted and that you've not got the wrong one to the wrong place. So I've just got my side seams out to the side so I can see where the front is. And then I can then look inside, see where my notch is. It's here. Hold on to it on the outside. And then I'm just going to put that on the back here. And then I want to show you how we're going to fit this because before we neaten up the inside, we're going to fit this onto whoever's wearing it in order to get these straps in the right position. Because can you remember that when I, we were constructing this back band, I said to you that we will, I'll show you how to get these straps in the right place and to finish it all off. And that's what we're going to do next. Let me just set the camera up slightly differently so that I can show you this section. Okay, so here we've got our dress all looking all lovely on our, um, I put it onto my mannequin, but you'll either have it on yourself or you'll have it on the person you're making your dress for. And so the front looks all lovely, that just needs finishing off on the inside, no problem at all with that. But if we just turn the mannequin round or your model round, then you'll see that I've just got a pin holding this, the position of the um, straps in place because as you can just roughly see, there's a black strap here on the back of the mannequin here and what i want you to do when you've got your your um your dress on or the dress on whoever is having it is i want you to just pay attention to where the dress fits on the front here and whether that needs shifting up or not because again that's a relevant thing isn't it whether you need that shifting up or not and then whereabouts the straps are fitting in terms of the width on the back here between the bra straps. So if I was wearing this, I'd say, well, actually, if I move it slightly over towards the um, left-hand side, then that st strap will 
hide the bra strap and that's how I want it to be. So this is what we're looking at now. We're just looking at the final placement for these straps. And I also want you to be aware of how much strap you're either leaving, you're going to hide inside the bodice in order to make this sit right at the front for somebody. So again, if you need to adjust the straps because there's, it needs to be slightly higher, then you can do that at this stage. I mean, you can lose as much as you want, depending on where they want to wear the dress. Um, or, you know, you've got a maximum amount there that you can go to that somebody could have it a little bit longer. So for now, the actual information that you're wanting to, to um, determine in terms of fit is how long your straps are to this point here, relevant to the, to the back band, and then how far to the left or far to the right they need to be. If they keep dropping off the shoulders you, and your person's gonna wear either strapless bra or no bra with it, then just bring your straps in slightly and that will hopefully stop the straps from just dropping off your shoulders slightly. But again, it depends whether or not hiding your bra straps or stopping it from falling off your shoulder is the most important thing. So mark that, you need to pin these actually in place with exactly where they need to be. Don't worry about, so, so my pins are just in the middle here at the moment and I'll zoom in so that I can show you that. They're just in the middle of the strap at the moment and I'll show you how to mark that position and then how we can um, put that into the top when we get onto the next section. But for now, I'm going to just say that these are roughly where mine are going to go. Um, and I've put my pins in place and then we're going to have a look at that. The other thing that just need to make, perhaps need to bear in mind is that it is possible for people to have one shoulder lower than the other. So, so long as when you're looking at them, the dress front is even across the front here and across the top, then don't worry too much if you find that you need one strap to be slightly shorter than the other, because that's really common as well. Um, and also certain, certain people with certain, what we tend to, do you know what it is? It tends to be which shoulder you have your handbag on. And if, if you carry your handbag on a shoulder strap, then generally that one's just slightly lower because we're used to having that extra weight there. But it's just a, a little thing to look out for because that's something that we can accommodate in handmade clothing. Whereas in shop bought, you might have to adjust for that. Um, but yeah, get, get your straps pinned into the place that you want and then um, we'll then talk about how to actually make that and fix these straps in and, and neaten everything off. Okay, so once you're back at your table with your pins in place holding your two straps in place, the first thing I want you to do before you take out the pin that's holding the strap in place is I want you to put an additional pin in that is exactly in line with the top of your bodice. So let me just put that through. So you don't want it, I've gone through my bodice, but you're not wanting to go through the bodice because we need to be able to move it, but you want it just to be right on that very top edge. And again, I think I've just caught a couple of fibres of my bodice. That's better, look, so you can see it's loose. But that pin there runs exactly horizontal across. I've still got my original pin in, so I don't lose my place, but that's where that is. The next thing that I want you to do is put another pin to the right of your strap. So this one is, so if I show you that that's my centre front there where my label is, look in the middle. And I've just put a pin to put this at the side of this strap just to mark it. And if you want to put a pin either side, you can do. That's probably not a bad, bad shout at this moment in time. So I've got a pin either side of my strap and I've got my pin marking where the strap hits the top of the bodice. And I've still got my pin in that was from the fitting that's holding that section down. So let's do the other one. So I might just straighten this up, but just, just even it up just slightly if you need to. So again, I put that pin in across the top and then I'm going to put a pin in either side of that strap as well, just so that I can mark where it needs to fit in between. So now that you've got those, those other pins in, you can take out the pin that was holding the strap in place from the fitting. Okay, so that's a strap, a pin in each, in each of the straps. And then you've got a pin in between where your straps are going to sit on the back of the bodice. The next thing you're going to do, and this way you need to just be really careful, is we're going to open up the bodice, from the, the lining from the bodice, 
just go back to where that seam is. It's a little bit difficult with two pins in, but you can do it. And find a position on your seam allowance between those two pins. And then you're going to go through your stitches until you hit your, your pins on either side. And if you need to just adjust them slightly so that you can release the lining and just pop them back in again as soon as you've done that. Sometimes you can still see the pinholes. Okay, so that's just released the lining. So now I can get to those stitches a little bit better. So I'm just undoing these stitches here. Just back to those pins, maybe a stitch just either side. Just because we need to be able to feed the strap in there. So that's gone through there. Okay, so now we've got a hole in our back between our lining and our front. So let's do that again. So let's just le release these pins in, out just so that it releases that lining. And then I can slot it back in again without taking my pin out completely so I'm not losing the place absolutely. That's it. That just goes down. And again, you're then going to go in the middle of where you are and you're just going to undo those stitches. Just between your pins. So now you've got two holes. After all this beautifully sewn garment and now we're putting holes into it. But you'll see why in a minute. Because what we're going to do now is, so make sure you've got your centre back. I can tell by my label. Here's my straps. So take your strap, make sure it's straight so you've not got any twists in it and you've still got your pin in it to show you where to go. And what I want you to do is just tuck that strap end into the hole you've just made by taking out those stitches. And you're going to slide it in until that pin is level with the bodice. And then once you've got that there, just hold on to it and just transfer the pin further down so that that pin is holding the strap in place in the bodice. I've still got the pins either side which can come out now because we've opened that up and we've slotted that, that strap in. So let's do the same on this side. So that there's our two pins marking the sides of our straps and there's our hole. Take your strap, make sure it's not twisted and then we can just poke that in between those two sets of pins. And in fact, we can take those pins out now because they've, they've done their purpose for while we were undoing the stitches. And then again, you're going to just slot that strap in until the pin is resting along the top edge of your bodice. And then once you've got that, hold on to it with finger and thumb and then just move your pin down so that you're pinning your strap on the inside just onto where you are. Okay, so we're back to the machine again. We're on a straight stitch. And where our straps are now, we are just going to transfer that pin to, so it's just going through the seam allowance. So I've, got, I've pinched it from the inside. Everything's all nice and lined up. So take that pin out, and we're now just going to trip, pin it through the seam allowance only, just so that it's holding it in place. Let's do the other one as well. So just pinch it in place with your finger and your thumb. I mean, in theory, you could have just um, attached it to your seam allowance in the first place, but sometimes it's a bit difficult to get inside. So it depends on however you feel best. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start, so we can see here we, is where we've undone our stitches. There's my threads. So I'm just going to go half a centimetre wider than the stitches that I've undone, and I'm going to reverse, and I'm going to go across, and you can sometimes see where your stitches have come out, and then I'm going to reverse it just at the back here. So this is attaching our strap into our bodice nice and neatly. And I wanted to wait until the end because I want you to be able to fit it so that you can get those straps in the right place rather than just follow the notches, which is a, a universal marking. And so it's more important that this garment is tailored exactly for you. And so having the straps in the right position and the right length is really important too. So let's just now start half centimetre before that strap. I'm just going to reverse stitch across the top of the strap and then half a centimetre the other side. And we can take our threads out. And when I fit this to my mum, I will be taking these stitches out so I can fit it directly to her. But I want to be able to show you how to do it. 
and then let's do the other one. Just keep your lining out of the way. So we're just stitching on that existing line that is already there. Half a centimetre before the strap. And just reverse through the strap. And then reverse again. Take our stitches out, take our starting shreds off. So I've just started taking the starting shreds off. Okay, so here we are now. So if I was fitting this for, for, for good now, I would try it on again before I go any further and just make sure that I did convey that instruction right and that the straps are in the right place and the right length because this is the, the final bit. And perhaps, you know, at this stage, you could even wear it around the house for an hour or two just to make sure that they're in the right place. Once you're happy, your straps are absolutely perfectly in the right place, then I would snip off the excess that you've got just standing proud within your bodice of this section here, those two bits. Because then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to understitch across the back of this. So if you remember the understitching is we did it on the front here and it's where the stitching holds the seam allowance to the lining so that it doesn't flip over in it. So it gives you that lovely finished edge on the inside and the out. So we're going to just, just do that bit now. So let's take our machine and get that set up and get our so, um, garment set up. So I'm going to the side seam here where we, where we stopped stitching, under stitching before. I'm going to push all of that seam allowance up into the, um, the line, sorry, the seam allowance towards the lining. And sometimes, depending on how you've done your side seams, you might not be able to get right into the corner, but that's okay because this is a, the underarm section, so you won't see it. So just start an inch in if you need to. And then you're going to line up your machine like we did before by moving your needle across to whatever position you need to be about one eighth of an inch into your uh, into your lining fabric and then we're going to then take a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back and then we're going to put our needle in our work so that we can just adjust where we are and we're going to go all the way across the back making sure that the seam allowance is down is in towards the lining I'm going to stop because I want mine to, I want to, don't want to have to undo all of this again when I try these on with my mum. So I'm just going to take my needle out now, but you would reverse stitch when you get to the other side, the other under position. You take your needle out of your work and you'll cut your threads. So you've then trimmed your excess off your um, straps and then we've under stitched as well, which just finishes off that seam just nicely because the next thing that you're going to do then, so this is the inside of our garment. Remember we folded over that edge before when we did it. We're now going to push all of our seam allowance up to the edge that we've got up inside our bodice. And then by matching our notches, because we've got the notches on the end here as well, haven't we? We can match the notches onto our pieces. We've got a side seam there, can go on top of the side seam as well. And we're going to pin our bodice down on the inside. So the bodice lining down on the inside like this. So just take it to your, to your pressing um, station and just press up that edge. So all the seam allowance is going to all sit all nicely. And then the line of the turn up for your lining wants to line up with the stitch line where you attached your bodice to your to the skirt of your dress and you're just going to carry on going all the way around and if you need to just pin that up a little bit more then you can do if it's just a little bit long you can do whatever you need to do just to make that sit beautifully and if you've got your notches at your centre back you can find your notches at your centre back again here to make sure that you don't get skewed when you're attaching this and you're just going to go around and attach all that and it should sit exactly perfectly with all of your ends of your gathers and all of your raw edges for your bodice should all sit all lovely inside your lining between your lining and your outer for your bodice oops 
So that's what it looks like from the inside when you're doing that. And that's what it looks like from the outside. Now, what I personally do is I will thread a, 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 a sewing, hand sewing needle with a coordinating thread. So I'd use white thread here and I would then go round and just hand stitch the lining edge just very neatly onto this row of stitches just here for the bodice. Can you see how there's a row of stitches just right where on the edge of that bodice? That's what attaches the skirt to the, to the bodice. And then that's just going to sit right on top of there. And then it's just going to, and I'm just going to hand stitch that down all the way around. Just one little thing to say that if you aren't a fan of hand stitching, you can machine stitch the bodice lining down. Let me just put a couple of pins in. What you need to do is make sure that your bodice lining, when you pin it, extends slightly past your stitches. And then hold it in place while you then pin from the outside of the dress. So you're going to pin almost in the ditch, in that ditch between the bodice and the skirt. And you want to be catching the bottom of your band because you need to make sure that when you sew around this, that you are going to catch the lining down neatly with your stitches. So that's why I hold it with my hand, but then I go on to the other side and I, st I put my pins right in that junction because then I can tell if it's going to catch the lining or not. And pin that all the way around, but have your pins on the right side of your dress because then line up your presser foot so that you're going to be stitching right in between that area just there. So you want, don't want the stitches to be too far down on your dress because all of these lovely, lovely gathers will then look like you've left some gathering stitches in. And you don't really want to catch it into your bodice, otherwise you're going to have a row of bot top stitching around the bodice, which might be a look you're happy to go with. Um, and you can do that if you want to, if you want to just sort of like go an eighth of an inch into your bodice, then you can do. But by having your pins there, holding the bodice down and by checking on the inside that you've caught your bodice fabric, then it does mean that you will then make sure to catch your um, lining fabric when you are stitching in the ditch, as this is called, because you're in the ditch between the bodice and the skirt. And then just line your machine up and take it really slow and just then keep sewing along here all the way around. And that will attach the lining into the bodice for you and attach that down. It's you, But you will see on the lining, you'll just see your row of stitches on the inside here. Personally, I, it's not a finish I like, just because, I mean, I, I accept that not everybody can hand sew or enjoys hand sewing or physically can hand sew. Um, so I do those limitations apart, but I do think it's easy to be wobbly and it's easy to catch into your bodice by mistake or go too far into your skirt by mistake. So really just take your time with doing that. And if the dress is just for you, you might not mind that it's slightly uneven on the inside. But for me, it's just a much, much nicer um, finish if I can just stitch that folded edge of the lining just down to the um, stitched edge that attach the two together. Once you've done that, You've then pretty much got a finished dress. The only thing that you need to do then is try your dress on and decide how long you want it to be. So I've overlocked the end of my dress and I find that either overlocking it or just marking it however you want to. And then I'd probably do a double turn on the bottom of here and I would turn my overlocking up towards the inside. Um, so I turn it over once and then again. And then I would either run round by hand Again, it's quite, a long, it's quite a long hem, so it will take a while. Or if you don't want to do that, then you can machine sew. But when you machine sew, sew up towards the folded edge into the skirt rather than halfway, because sometimes it can kind of fold down and it doesn't look as nice. So if you can go over three quarters of the depth of your hem, so as you can see, I've just done that. Let me just get my hook and pick. I would be trying to sew around about here on my hem. I wouldn't be sewing down here. I know there's only a slight difference, but up here you're going to catch that up and that hem is going to just sit nicely. But if you, and again, you can just hand sew this if you want to just turn it over however much you need in order to, to neaten that off um, and to have that all done. So, we're finished. Let me turn the camera around. 
So, we're all done. The dresses are finished. I really hope that you're happy with your dress and that you feel really proud of everything that you've achieved with this beautiful swooshing skirt you've got. The lovely gathers all the way along the front here, the straps, you know, I mean, I think that this is one of those dresses where it really does look professionally made. Um, and I know that it might be your very first garment, but hopefully by following the steps, you, you know, you feel that you've made a dress and a garment that you're really, really proud of. Um, I've shown you how to finish it to the best that I can and I hope that you've enjoyed seeing all those little tips and tricks with me. Um, I do love making uh, making and wearing a handmade wardrobe, I must admit, it really does um, excite me to know that I've made something and that it fits as well as it can do um, and that I've adjusted that to fit to me. And, and now you're part of my club too. So congratulations. Um, I want to say thank you as well to the designer of the Marcel dress and from Chalk and Notch Patterns as well because it's a corker. It really is a beautiful dress that just looks so different in all of the fabrics that I've seen. Um, I mean, I, I'm just looking at this now and can see it on the picture. Look, we've got those beautiful flowers there just across the front here, which was just a fluke really with the pattern placement, but really happy with those. Um, so yeah, so thank you to the um, designer at Chalk and Notch for the Marcel dress. I hope you've enjoyed stitching along with me. It's been a long one, but that you know, I wanted to include that detail, and I don't always go into this amount of detail with all of my videos, um, but it was particularly to try and give um, beginners a starting point to have a go at a, a dress that I think you might feel would look beyond you if you didn't have any help to make it. So. Yeah, I'm really pleased. If you've enjoyed my video, please consider subscribing. I do enjoy having you along. That's a nice thing to do. Or click like on the video. That's always a really big help as well too for all the algorithm for YouTube. It just means that it pushes my videos out to more people. And the more people we can get on to enjoy our sewing journey, then, you know, that's that's what I'm all about. So I just want to inspire you and others to get the most out of your sewing so that you can be really proud of the things that you wear and that you can enjoy the process as well without tearing your hair out. That's the theory anyway. If I'm not explaining anything too well or you've got any questions or there's issues that you want help with, pop some details in the comments below and I will answer and I will help you. Um, but hopefully we won't need too many of those because hopefully I've covered everything off as much as I can do. So. I'm going to pack this dress away now. This is going back with me to the UK later this month and I'm hoping to do a little bonus video. I'll try and do a little bit of a twirl video of me actually popping this onto my mum and then um, I'll, and just seeing how she looks. Now I'll need to adjust the straps at the back for her because I just pop those in to show you how to do it. Um, but then I'll adjust those for her and make sure this is fitting really nicely for her. And, and then just adjust the hem. So whatever the hem needs to go up or, or not, I, well, it's can only, it can only go up, it's not gonna go down. Um, so yeah, I'll get that sorted out and, um, and then she'll have a dress hopefully that she enjoys wearing when she comes to visit me. Happy stitching everybody, enjoy yourselves, um, enjoy the process and I will speak to you soon for another video. Take care everybody and thank you so much for watching and for your support, I really, really do appreciate it. Take care, bye.